Buddy, the federal government and Justin Trudeau do not control the banks within Canada. That is not within the jurisdiction of government. Now, whether you're on the right or the left, all of us agree this is bullshit. The housing market that we're living under? Ridiculous. You cannot place that on Trudeau alone as if conservatives would have done anything fucking differently. In fact, they would have arguably done worse. The reason things are the way they are and the way our housing market is the way it is is because of corruption that exists within all levels of government, within all parties. See, we on the left vote against conservatives because you guys are looney tunes. Blaming Trudeau for everything just because you don't like the guy. Because you've fallen for far-right propaganda telling you to kick the other side instead of ever working with them. Every single citizen who's not benefiting from the housing market would agree with you. It's nonsense. But you need to understand how our system of government works and how our economy works. Now, both the conservative and the liberal parties are the pro-corporate status quo parties that be. All these social issues you've attached your entire identity to are just a distraction while the rich rob us blind. Now, usually I just argue with you guys, mock you, because it's quite honestly hilarious. But seriously, I just think for a second, what is capitalism doing? We're in the late stages of capitalism right now. Making money. Profit over anything. Stop allowing the Conservative Party to distract you by saying everything is Trudeau's fault when he can't do half the shit you guys blame him for. And instead, point the finger at people that use single-family homes as investments, buy multiple properties, jack up the rent for everybody. Foreign investors, people laundering their money. Banks, REITs, and development companies. Blame the system itself, which has been printing fiat dollars for 50 plus years like it's going out of style. Now make no mistake, there are clear and distinct differences socially between the liberals and the conservatives. And that's by design to distract us from the fact that economically, conservatives and liberals vote together a lot of the time. Pretty much always in corporate interests. But that's because... Most of the population just argues with each other about liberal or conservative party every four years to have a figurehead of the country who holds very little power without parliament to affect change in our daily lives, which more often than not are the provincial and municipal government's responsibilities. How about instead of picking fights with me online, you call your local MP? For fuck's sakes. Anywho, you have a wonderful day, eh? You know what, never mind. I'm gonna go off. Because it's a complicated and nuanced issue, and honestly, I just like hearing myself talk. My voice is fucking dreamy. Now, the reason that the Bank of Canada has increased the interest rates to what they're doing is because they're trying to combat inflation. Because all levels of government, federal, provincial, municipal, down to your frickin' city councillors, not one of our representatives want to represent us, the people. That has nothing to do with what parties in power. It is solely because that's the kind of mindset we have as a society. Fuck you, I got mine. The poor can suffer. You just don't like it because now it's happening to you. Like here, I'll use this as an example. I'm a resourceful guy. I could do a lot of parts of building a house for myself. No problem. You get the structural, electrical, and HVAC stuff in there? I can do a lot of the rest. What do you think would happen if I went to a construction company and I was like, hey, I got $50,000 from you. You want to take a couple weeks and have your crew and do a project for me? Generally, no. People are concerned with making the most amount of profit possible, which, fine, free market entrepreneurship, I get it. But government funded, at least for some levels, disabled people, veterans, since you guys care about them, right? Or just nomads that don't want much. We should subsidize the build of small, tiny homes. Have whole subdivisions. Entire apartment buildings filled with residence, college-style rooms. Have it be affordable. Let's say maximum 35% of your minimum wage paycheck, like it's supposed to be. Sounds nice, doesn't it? That's because I just mentioned what socialism is. You see, because right now we're living in a private housing market. And just like in every single case... When anything that's a basic necessity for life gets privatized, we suffer. 
I hear you. You don't trust the government. You think they're incompetent. You don't want them in many things, but our rights, the things we need to survive, are something we should never even give the government any chance to toy with. Don't let things fly just because you, in your particular situation, may be doing well. Is everybody housed? Is everybody fed? Does everybody have a clear and definitive path out of poverty? Nobody working over 40 hours a week should be living in poverty. Look, this is never going to happen, but let's say in a utopian society, all us Canadians pooled our resources. Let's say 19 million people. Well, let's say that 19 million of us could manage to save $10 a day in a collective pool. Now, of course, in this situation, you would want to set up a legally accountable sort of system of governance behind it, but like a people's treasury. Well, per year, while this is a lot of money, it's not necessarily unattainable. Well, that would give every single citizen a lot of money, but not necessarily impossible. Like, again, we're talking a totally utopian world. This is just a thought project, but imagine if we as Canadians were able to do this. Well, what's 3,650 times 19 million? Oh, it's just 69 billion, 350 million. That could apparently wipe out food insecurity and poverty for the world. And we as Canadians could do it easily if we could get organized. It could wipe away student debt for Canada. Wow. And think how many freaking homes could be built with that. Things that could be done in our daily lives. Like, that's the thing. Humans are both shitty and amazing. We're capable of wonderful things and horrific things. But I think our biggest flaw as a society is apathy. Imagine what would happen if that many Canadians could organize like that. How far would we be as a society if the rest of the planet did that too? Again, to the best of each individual person's ability. Like seriously, stop the fervently defending party politics. It's it's boring. All it is is kabuki theater. Anywho, to keep going with this, how many homeless people are in Canada? Well, between 25,000 and 35,000 on any given night, I don't trust that number, so let's say it's 1 million people. Well, if we were to save our money together, 150,000 for each one of those million people to get a little tiny home, enough to protect them from the elements. Who gives a fuck what it costs? 150 billion, it would take us three ish years. Less if we wanted to get serious about it. We could completely eradicate the housing market. Just saying, the housing market is about supply and demand. So, what if we just got rid of the demand and drastically increased the supply ourselves? If enough of us did it and pressured our government to allow us to, don't forget we as the people hold the power. They can't go against all of us if we're organized. And yeah, we'd probably need a shitload of land, so tack on another $60 billion. Another year. And you know, even though I doubt it, if any rich people felt like contributing. And yeah, I realize I'm an idealist. But wouldn't you rather live in that world? One where we look out for each other?